No one's going to get rich from red rectangles. So let's use balls instead. I'll go down to we have uh, our touches began method here, and I'll get rid of this box code entirely. I'm going to say instead, let ball be an SK sprite node. With the image named initializer, I'll use ball red, a red ball. Then ball dot physics body. We'll do SK physics body. We don't want to use this time circle of radius because a circle rather than a box. And the radius of our thing is going to be the ball's size width divided by two. As a reminder, uh, diameter is the whole width of the circle, and then radius is half the width of diameter. So our radius is just half the width of our ball. For center, we can just skip that entirely. Boom. We're going to also add ball dot physics body question mark dot restitution and give it a value of 0 0.4. Then position that at the user's touch, so location, and finally call add child ball. Now, there are two new things here. The circle of radius physics body is there so the balls behave as balls rather than squares. But restitution is there on the physics body, which refers to its bounciness, where values go from zero, not bouncy at all, to one super bouncy. So 0 0.4 is quite bouncy. Now you may notice here the ball physics body is optional, so it requires optional chaining. It might not exist. Now, obviously, we know it exists because we just literally created the line before. So you could very well say ball physics body exclamation mark. It's fractionally faster, perhaps, to do that. But either way, it's the same sort of thing. If you're on the game now, hopefully we can drop bouncy balls on the screen where we tap. Let's find out. I'll tap here. Here we go. Bouncy balls. Yeah, cool. So it's fractionally more interesting, but still, yeah, let's face it, pretty much a dreadful game. To make things more exciting, we're going to add something for the balls to bounce off. So I've added already for you in the assets folder, we have this thing here called a bouncer. So we're going to place that into the game now. Just below, uh, did move to view, uh, just before, sorry, here we go. We have our physics body here. We're going to add a bouncer on the screen. We're going to say uh, let bouncer equals an SK sprite node using image named again, this time called bouncer. Uh, we'll position this thing, uh, bouncer.position at CG point. We'll do X512, that's the middle of our game scene, and Y0, so the bottom of our game scene. Then we'll say bouncer.physics body is an SK physics body. Again, circular radius, this thing's round. So we'll do bouncer.size.width divided by uh, two and no center. Then bouncer.physicsbody question mark dot is dynamic equals false. So this thing here is new, is dynamic. When this thing's true, the object will be moved by the physics simulation based on gravity and collisions. When it's false, as it is here, the object will still collide with other things, but it won't ever be moved as a result. It'll be fixed in place forever. And finally, I want to add that bouncer to our scene. So I'll do add child bouncer, then press command R to build it back and see how it looks. Or being well, we should see that rainbow circle thing at the bottom center of our screen. There it is, just off the bottom here. So it's half on, half off. When I drop balls at it, they'll bounce off it, but it will never actually move. So the balls respond to the physics correctly as the bouncer, but the bouncer will not be affected by their collisions. So adding this bouncer took what one, two, three, four, five lines of code. But our game is going to have more than one bouncer. In fact, I want five of them evenly placed across the screen. Now we could just copy and paste the code five times, then change the positions. But I hope you realize there's a better way. Creating a method that does all the work then calling that once for each time we want a bouncer. So I'm going to copy that code to my pasteboard and make a new method down here called func make bouncer at position cg point and paste that code in there. The same code we had before. Except now we don't have to have this cg point 512.0. We want to say at position that thing that was passed in. So whatever was passed into our method, use that for our bouncer position. And with that in place, we can make a bouncer in just one line of code. Just call make bouncer at. 
to show this off, let's go up to did move to view. Here we go. I'm going to say uh, make bouncer at CG point. X will be zero, Y will be zero, so bottom left corner. Then I'll copy and paste that a few times like that. We've got X uh, 256, X 512, Y 768, and X 1024. These are placed across the screen from 0 to 1024, the uh, edge of our view. Uh, and it's placing them at intervals of 256. So it'll be spread evenly across the screen. If I press Command R now, we should see five bouncers placed across the screen nicely. All of which have physics, hopefully. Let's find out. Boom. There we go. So bouncer both of them now, which is fantastic. There we go. Look at that. Yeah. Brilliant. So these things are really coming together very nicely. It's still not a game, but we are getting there slowly. So now to add something between the bouncers.